Today, learners of SD1 Pangasinan, Teacher Verna here, and join me for another amazing lesson here at Shenseya TV, where learning science is always fun. In this lesson, you will get to know the mechanisms that produce change in populations from generation to generation. Before we start, observe the two pictures of the twins. What can you say about them? Do they have similarities and differences? Absolutely! Elise has darker hair and slight tan compared to Paula. Although they are twins, they also have differences. So, what do you call these differences? You got it right! These differences are called variation. Our lesson for today is about mechanisms that produce change in population. So, what is genetic variation? Genetic variation refers to individual differences between population or individual. It is also due to the genetic material you inherit from your parents. For example, you might inherit the brown eye color or the height of your parents that is not present in your other siblings. Mutations are the original source of genetic variation. It is a mistake or a change in a living thing's DNA. In lesson 2, you have learned that DNA is arranged in a particular sequence or order. Base A joins only with base T and base C joins only with base G. But these bases may join incorrectly and this may result to mutation. Think about this. What happens if you hit the wrong key in the computer keyboard? Doesn't the computer get the wrong message? Cells are like the computer. A wrong DNA code gives the cell the wrong message. The result is that the wrong type of protein is made. Although most mutations are harmless, some are serious. An example of a serious condition is hemophilia. Hemophilia is a rare disorder in which the blood doesn't clot normally because it lacks sufficient blood clotting proteins. Allele frequencies in a population may change due to mechanisms that produce change in population, the natural selection, gene flow, and genetic drift. Natural selection is the process in nature by which organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and reproduce more than those less adapted to their environment. Let's say, for example, a gray and a green tree frog in dark wooded areas on tree bark. Gray tree frog blend well in dark wooded areas compared to the green tree frog. Which of the two tree frogs is easier to find by the predators? Exactly! The green tree frog is easier to find by the predators than the gray tree frog. Tree frogs that have been eaten do not live to have any more baby tree frogs. Therefore, natural selection has favored tree frogs that live in habitats in which they are more camouflaged. Another mechanism is the gene flow. Gene flow involves the movement of genes into or out of a population due to either the movement of individual organisms or their gametes. Organisms and gametes that enter a population may have new alleles or may bring in existing alleles but in different proportions than those already in the population. For example, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman from Sweden moves to India and married an Indian and produce offspring who now have the blue-eyed alleles. Next is genetic drift. Genetic drift is a change in allele frequencies in a population from generation to generation that occurs due to chance events. An example of a genetic drift is a northern elephant's heels have reduced genetic variation, probably because of a population bottleneck humans inflected on them in the 1890s. Hunting reduced their population size to as few as 20 individuals at the end of the 19th century. Their population has since rebounded to over 30,000, but still, they have much less genetic variation in a population of southern elephant seals that was not so intensely hunted. But what if there's no mutation, natural selection, or migration? According to hardy weinberg principle that in an infinitely large interbreeding population in which mating is random and there is no selection, migration, or mutation, 
gene and genotype frequencies will remain constant from generation to generation. But there are five conditions that must be met for genetic equilibrium to occur. No mutation, no migration, a very large population size, random mating, and no natural selection. I hope you learned and enjoyed our lesson. Again, this is Teacher Verda, and see you again in our next lesson.